Hello, my beautiful friends. My name is Kim, and I hope you're having a fabulous day today. If you are interested in true crime like I am, I hope that you would consider hitting that subscribe button. Today, I have a case for you. This is a case that hasn't been talked about that much. It has a little bit of coverage, but the last coverage is from a couple years ago, and this hasn't gone to trial. But let me tell you, I have no idea why it's not being talked about because this case is so interesting. Some cases I understand get more coverage than others because of public interest. I can tell you that this case is equally as interesting as it is messed up. This is the case of Aston Ness, which I have to say is the coolest name ever, Aston very cool. This case has not gone to trial, so everything in this video is alleged, but pretty obvious. I have said, see something, say something more times than I can count, but in this case, someone seen something and then shot the abuser in the leg. Let's get into it. But first, hit that subscribe button. I have lots of good cases coming up, and I know you don't want to miss them. I also wanted to let you guys know that I have a new shirt out, new merch. It's the Rockstar shirt. This was by a request from one of you amazing rock stars. So check it out. The link will be below. But let's get into the case. On August 19th, 2018, Alexandria Murphy, who is the mom, 27-year-old Blair, who is the father, and son Ashton Ness, 16 months old, were at home. Alexandria had to go to work. Um, she was leaving around 10 or 11 a.m., so as she runs out the door to head to her bartending job, she sees Blair feeding their son Ashton. She would say she never suspected what would happen next. So you can just imagine, she's headed to her job, she looks over and, you know, father's feeding son, and she has a smile on her face thinking that her son is going to be taken care of when she leaves the house. But brace yourself, because the next time Blair and Ashton would be seen is when Blair is dragging 16-month-old Ashton outside of their Oak Forest apartment in Louisville, Texas. This was sometime before 1 p.m. on that Sunday. Blair, the father, is yelling, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, before he slams Ashton on the cement and then proceeds to insert a knife into his abdomen several times. This is in the middle of the day. Probably people are returning from church. It's 1 a.m. on a Sunday, and they are all witnessing what is going on. And then the 911 calls start rolling in. Blair Ness is in police custody. He's undergone psychological evaluation. Right now, he's at the Louisville jail. But once detectives finish interviewing him, he will be transported to the Denton County Jail. He's being held on $1.5 million bond. And police say right now, he is silent, not saying. Somebody kill a little kid out here in Old Forest apartment right now. Somebody needs to get out here right now. Some neighbors called 911. He's dead on the floor. There's blood everywhere. Police say Ness was stabbing his 16-month-old Ashton in the middle of the apartment courtyard in Louisville Sunday. Police say the child's mother was at work at the time, unaware. Witnesses say Ness was yelling scriptures, things like, Jesus is coming. But for the neighbor, Austin Andrew, he was like, hell no, not today, buddy. He was watching the scene from his second story balcony when he grabbed his weapon and shot Ness in the leg. Others tried to stop 27-year-old Blair Ness, including one man who shot Ness in the leg from a balcony about 40 yards away. I think my boyfriend's shooting Ness over here. Okay, take a deep breath for me, okay? You're doing a good job. 
ending the attack. You know, once Ness was shot, he stopped attacking his son. The cops had confirmed that Andrew will not face any criminal charges. I think we can all agree that this was definitely warranted. Once the police came to the scene to intervene, both Father Blair and son Ashton were rushed to the hospital. But poor 16-month-old Ashton would succumb to his injuries. An officer tended to the child as paramedics waited for police to get the scene under control. He scooped up the child's body uh, in his bare arms and uh, rushed him uh, on foot to the awaiting ambulance. And uh, it's, that's going to carry a lot on that officer. There is video footage reported of the father Blair by the neighbors. He is heard shouting, I just want to see my mom when he's being dragged from the police. So this grown man who hurt a child is yelling, I just want my mom. Blair was also heard saying that he knows everyone is going to be mad at him, but mad is definitely an understatement. Captain Mike Lane says even with a gunshot wound, Ness would not cooperate as officers dragged him away. Initially, he wouldn't comply. He was, the officers were telling him to, to get down on the ground. He wouldn't do it. Uh, ultimately, they had to use a taser to uh, get him into custody. So the police want to know how and why and what happened. And so they ended up roping everything off and they start their investigation. In the police affidavit, they state that the smell of newly burnt marijuana is apparently in this apartment. It's smoke hazed in the apartment. Crime scene investigators will also carry with them the horror of discovering knives and scissors in the courtyard, as well as a trail of blood described in the probable cause affidavit that led officers from the courtyard to the family's apartment. The affidavit states an odor of fresh burnt marijuana. Several skull fragments were also located near the bedroom. The affidavit also states while being placed in handcuffs, Ness said, I know everyone's mad, I'm mad. I killed my son. You wonder if there wasn't more in that smoky treat? On some forums, websites, they mention K2. I learned about K2 in another case that I covered where the suspect um, was suspected of being on K2 because of the action of the criminal was just so out of left field. But I am not sure this is completely out of left field for Blair, despite the girlfriend claiming Blair had started reading the Bible extensively recently and that the couple had even been attending church services regularly. And basically, she didn't have any idea this was going to happen. According to Dallas News, the family said Blair, quote, left the earth sometime in the last few weeks as he opened a door to allow demons to enter into his body, unquote. I spoke to a representative of his family who says he has no history of mental illness and he was not a violent person. That family spokesperson also says that he dated the child's mother for about two years and the two recently had been going to church. But this person believes that Ness took that down a different path and had been watching satanic videos on YouTube. This is a statement from Blair Ness's family. They say the shock of this vicious act will forever affect anyone that is close to this horror. We thank you for all the support, space and kindness during this time. So of course, this is not sound evidence, but it does give us an idea of the state of mind that Blair was in. Other information that was also in this article is that in 2013, he entered a guilty plea in New Mexico on charges of aggravated battery causing great bodily harm and kidnapping of a victim younger than 18. He pled guilty but was placed on deferred adjudication probation. The charges were dismissed in 2018 when he completed the probation program. And Ness does have criminal history out of New Mexico. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to probation for kidnapping and assault in 2013. Blair was arrested again on March 23rd, 2013, after an overnight standoff with a SWAT team in Las Lunas, New Mexico, according to KOAT-TV. Police were called to his home after a woman told dispatchers that she was S.A.ed and Blair refused to come out for six hours. The police 
police got fed up with it and had to pepper spray inside. And then he finally did come out and ended the standoff. That article has that information, but I am not sure if he didn't get a lot of time or what, but according to Blair's Facebook, he got with his girlfriend in 2016. I just don't know how he would have got less time than three years, but I guess it is definitely possible you know, enough to meet her? I don't know. Hearing those charges that are very serious charges, I'm going to leave all my sources below because I have not seen much on this case and this man was dangerous, according to these. So the police continued through the apartment. They found a huge blood stain on the master bedroom carpet, complete with blood-stained folding knife and skull fragments lying by the bedroom door. The police officers also found a trail of blood leading outside to where the neighbors witnessed the attack. According to the affidavit, several kitchen knives were also found in the grass next to the pool of blood evidence found outside. Then you look into Blair's Facebook post. Actually, this one seems quite nice. This was just days before the attack. Blair posted a picture on Facebook of the young, adorable family and expressed his devotion to them and Jesus. Quote, the start of something beautiful. I love my family. Man, do we have a strong bond. Let's all stand strong in Jesus Christ because it's so much better than magic, unquote. A little churchy, but honestly, it's nothing off-putting to me anyway. I mean, if I was scrolling through my Facebook and I seen this, I would think, you know, it's a normal post. I wouldn't think twice about it, honestly. But this next post that was his last post before the incident was a bit odd. I actually did have to read this one a couple times because it is so odd. It reads, quote, I just want my family and friends to know that I love them and I am not trying to push them away. The problem is that we are scared and indoctrinated and our own minds to be quiet is everywhere. Shh, don't say anything. I know it sounds crazy. I might lose friends and family members, but bottom line, I live in all glory to Jesus Christ. I surrender my life to him so that the opinions of everyone I have ever met is meaningless to me, for I look to the favor our King of kings and Lord of lords. It may seem harsh in the mind, but deep down we all know it, and if you don't, then the line in the sand has been drawn, and I understand. I love all of you, but stop being afraid to say it how it is. Peace." Unquote. The message is all sorts of odd to me. I remember when I started with Facebook and I would be going through something and I would post some off-putting weird stuff that was part of what was going on. Unless you knew the whole story, you really wouldn't know and it really wouldn't make sense. I quickly learned that you move on, but the post is out there forever. But I really don't think that this is the case here. One part of the message, he writes, shh, don't say anything, but then ends it with stop being afraid to say it how it is. How can you draw a line in the sand and then say that you understand? You guys give me your thoughts. I just found this post to be all kinds of odd, but, you know, maybe not. One of the officers on the scene said, quote, I've been in law enforcement for over 20 years, and this is probably the worst call I've ever been on in my career, unquote. Police Captain Hunter said, quote, we're all still pretty confused on how something like this can happen, unquote. The next day, a family member launched a GoFundMe campaign to help Ashton's mother with her son's final expenses. I think I read something that it got over $20,000 at the time. To get to know Ashton a bit better, his family would say that Ashton lit up a room when he entered it. He had a great smile and the cutest dimples you ever saw, and we will never forget all that we've learned and what he has taught us, 
Oh, that is so heartbreaking. So they spent the weekend prior, the family did spend the weekend prior with Ashton. So I'm glad they were able to get that time with him. He seems like the sweetest little boy. As for Blair, the latest I've seen, and I'll actually play it. The Louisville father, police say, murdered his toddler son on Sunday, admitted to them that he did it. That's not really that surprising since police say Blair Ness did it in front of several neighbors, yelling at them about it while they tried to stop him. Ness was charged with capital murder today after his transfer from a hospital to jail. His newly released arrest affidavit includes some disturbing evidence found at the apartment complex where it happened. But since it's not being talked about and it has been pretty dark in the media on what is happening, I have my Google alerts set on this case as it moves forward. Hopefully I can do a complete deep dive on this case once it goes to trial. Let me know what you guys think of this style of video. Just a bite size with a little bit of information that is out there, but maybe that you've never heard of. I really like these videos because I feel like I am filling in the blanks kind of being a detective. Anyways, this will always be like a bonus video, a midweek video, and I'll have a new video up this weekend for you guys, a more deep dive. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Thanks to all my channel members and my Patreons who continue to support me. Their names are on the screen. If you would like early access to new videos or decide the cases I cover next, you can do so by clicking the join button from your desktop or there is a video in the description box on how to do it from your phone. If you guys have made it to the end, you guys are rock stars and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my Crimey Stories playlist for you to check out. Stay safe, my loves. And as always, if you see something, say something. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.